Bonjour tout le monde, I'm Diane. Welcome back to We in France, where we talk about everyday French life and beyond. I'm an American, I've lived in France since 2012, and I'm so happy you're here, but we're gonna get right into today's video. It's another grocery store video, the highly requested Monoprix tour. So if you're familiar with the French grocery store chain, you'll love it. If not, I hope you'll learn something. And if you're into French grocery store content, I've done a bunch of other videos, including a trip to Aldi, the German low-cost supermarket here in France, as well as an entire video on souvenirs you can find at the grocery store in France, and just some more traditional items. Okay, so we're gonna head over into that Monoprix video and just one quick thing, stick around to the end because I'm running a new segment testing out things I love where I share something that I love. Maybe a quote, a book, a podcast, something I bought, and today, blogs that I love. So let's get into it. All right, we're heading out to the French grocery store Monoprix or Monoprix en Francais. And it's a pretty popular grocery store chain, one that you'll see mostly in big cities or at least city centers. It's not a chain that you will see uh, in smaller towns or in the countryside. And uh, if you've been to Paris, you've definitely seen the store because it was founded in 1932 in La Région Parisienne in Clichy. And uh, it tends to be a higher end store with a lot of really interesting, cool products. They also have uh, housewares and gifts and usually some clothes. So it's a big store, usually multi-level. And it does tend to be a little bit on the expensive side being that it is in city centers. So sushi is something you'll see in a lot of city center stores. It's gotten more and more popular over the years. So as I always point out, bio in French means organic, and this is the organic and health food aisle. And uh, you'll see a lot of these brands here, the Gerblé, these cookies in regular grocery stores as well. Not always, you know, these aren't specialty cookies by any means. Monoprix has regular brands as well, but you'll find some specialty products, things that maybe you wouldn't find in the countryside. Um, the grocery stores near me don't have cliff bars and nut bars and all of this. This stuff's more for, for city centers. These actually look interesting. Maybe I'll try these. It's always nice to get new to me products. And this is stuff I don't generally see. They have a really nice liquor section here. This Monoprix, very nicely lit, all kinds of wines, a lot of French wines and French liquors, but that's not all they have. Something you'll see this time of year in the January, February timeframe are uh, crepe pans, really thin frying pans that are specially made to make crepes. There's a holiday coming up, I believe, uh, the beginning of February, the Chandeleur, and uh, it's all about crepes. So they have a whole special section here with eggs and crepe materials, <laughs> some sugar and flour, really nice. Okay, this oatmeal that I'm showing you on the top shelf, I'm like really excited about this. It's $6.99, so not cheap. Let me take this one down. This is something I've never seen before. Uh, pancake mix, that's banana and cinnamon. That's why I love coming to Monoprix. I find stuff that would be maybe commonplace back in the US, but hasn't really caught on in France yet, except in trendier stores like this one. So I'm getting this. And sometimes people ask me if France has non-dairy milk selections. And uh, yeah, they do. Even in, you know, non-Monoprix grocery stores, you will find different types of, you know, organic soy milk. Uh, we also have an almond milk option here. So if you're vegan, vegetarian, or just prefer to have nut-based milk, France has you covered. Uh, looks like there's a rice milk here, the riz. Then we have a coconut milk as well. And then as we get down here, there's different, different types of other milks. So yeah, there's options for vegetarians. Something you'll notice in Monoprix is their colorful, big uh, capital text marketing. This is the store brand, it's marked Monoprix, uh, very colorful, and uh, it's actually pretty good. You'll see that as I take you through, just seeing all the store brand products. But these are all of the tablets of chocolate, chocolate bars, and you'll see Monoprix has regular brands that you find elsewhere, like Lindt, Milka, 
it's not just all high-end special stuff, but they do have products that maybe you won't find in countryside grocery stores. So here's just more uh, packaging of the Mono Pre brand. It's really nice, really eye-catching. And this is an applesauce and a little squeeze pack, not just for kids, but this one says it's light in sugar. And then something over here caught my eye. These uh, petit pain grillé, people put um, jam on these in the morning. They're great for breakfast. This is a store brand as well. So here we have something that looks like an alternative to Nutella at $7.99. And it's marked right here without palm oil and it's organic. Okay, so something that you see now, it's pretty commonplace, but when I first came to France, is uh, cottage cheese. It's made by Danon. And uh, it's something you actually see pretty commonly now. And in French grocery stores, there's no shortage of uh, cured meats for charcuterie boards and that sort of thing. Here they have an excellent selection of all kinds of ham and salamis and that sort of thing. And again, the Mono Pre brand here, we had the jambon sec. Yeah, really nice. Saucisson. This is all meat. So Halo Top here is a low calorie ice cream that originated in the U.S. and it just came to France in the past year or two, only at Monoprix. And uh, it's actually pretty good for what it is. And it's funny how the world becomes smaller as time goes on. That's something that was definitely not available when I first came. And if you're interested in frozen pizzas, here are the different kinds. You might see things that are familiar to you, ham and mushroom toppings. Uh, but they also have more interesting options like uh, smoked salmon, organic here with uh, with uh, zucchini, grilled zucchini. Okay, in the winter, raclette is really popular and here they have some, some different types of cheese you can use for the raclette. There's a special machine, a fondue machine that uh, melts the cheese and you could dip potatoes and all sorts of things. You could actually see on the packaging, the potato, how it looks melted. Here's a nice assortment. And usually the cheeses are flavored in some way. So this one is actually mustard. There's just uh, raw milk and then also pepper. So it just depends, just depends what kind you want. Okay, it's not a trip to the French grocery store unless you take a look at the butter options. So there's all kinds of really good brands of butter. You can just take a quick look here. Du means unsalted and demi sel means salted. And then if I could just point your attention to this little leaf here, it's marked Médaille d'Argent. That's a special competition every year. Um, I don't know how it is with the pandemic, but different products in a whole range of categories are rated by judges. Very serious food stuff, all kinds of things, butter, wine, pretty much any food product you can think of. So if you look for that little metal, that little leaf that's gold, silver, and bronze, you can rest assured that you're getting a high quality product. Okay, and always a fan favorite are the grocery store desserts. You know, best is always go to a bakery, but if you can't get to a bakery and you just want something maybe a little cheaper that's still really good, that's not a crazy big portion, uh, you can just pop over to the aisle in the grocery store and grab one of these. You'll see Monoprix has a line that says Monoprix uh, Gourmet, and that's just their special store brand of higher end products. I'll try to zoom in here. I don't, I'm only trying to touch the things that I'm buying. So um, yeah, I'll just show you here. So there's everything from panna cotta to caramel creams, a little bit of outside influence here. I spotted Oreo cheesecake, which looks excellent. Um, but everything here from little caramel beurre salé tarts to chocolate mousse. And this is all the store brand here, the Monoprix Gourmet. Then we have rice pudding. Uh, La Fermière actually is available in the US 
I don't know if they have the same product line, but that's available. They make excellent yogurts as well. And then you might know the Bon Maman brand. They make jams and desserts and yogurts. And then a favorite of mine is this Michel and Augustin brand here of mousses. They make a dark, a light. Let me take you behind me to some of the cheese that you can get at the grocery store as well. And you'll see everything from goat cheese in a log there that is also called a bûche. It says la bûche, you see? And up here we have different cheeses made with goat cheese as well. Then if I step back, you can see there's all different things. And a brand you might be familiar with because it is available outside of France is Président. And here we have some camembert and brie, that sort of thing. So might look familiar to you. Okay, when it comes to dairy milk in France, something I always point out, no matter what grocery store you go to, you're always going to find a selection of eggs, non-refrigerated, shelf-stable, and you'll also find uh, pasteurized milk, UHT milk. It's been processed differently than milk that you find that's refrigerated. So these bricks here and all of these milks are shelf-stable for several months until you open them and then you refrigerate the milk, obviously, once it's open. And something you'll see that's pretty standard in France, the red top is whole milk marked by entier, écrémé, with the green top is generally skim. And then what we have are the blue tops, and these are considered 2%. It's called demi-écrémé. <laughs> Right now we are in the period of Les Soldes. It's a twice annual sale all across the country where products in all types of stores are usually marked down and you could find some really good buys, but the competition is tough. And as time goes on, the good sizes usually sell out, but you'll get a better deal if you wait until the end. And they run for a little over a month, usually toward the end of January. Okay, and one of the things I love from Monoprix are these little bags. They are great shopping bags that open up into, you know, a decent sized bag. They come in a little pouch like this in a bunch of different patterns. So what I think I'm going to do, if you're still watching at this point, I'm going to buy a bunch of them and give them to you as a giveaway and stick around to the end. Uh, I think I'll maybe send maybe three of you, two bags each, something like that. So to enter the giveaway, stick around to the end of the video where I explain how to do that. Oh wow, there are a lot of really cool flowers and really nice patterns. And again, these are shopping bags that you could use at the grocery store or wherever. Ooh, and they do have the Paris motif. Look at this, look at this, look at this. This is the most popular one and it has, it has little insignias there of the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, I'll get a bunch of these. So stick around to the end to find out how to enter the giveaway. You can find some nice accessories too in Monoprix, like nice scarves, as shown here. And look, a beret. It's not just a stereotype. French people do buy and wear berets. And how much are these guys? Looks like they are 13, no, 15.99 in all different colors. Cool. You'll also find some makeup. A big brand you'll see is the Bourgeois Paris right here, but you'll see other brands you know, like L'Oreal. There's Essie nail polish to my left, Maybelline. And in France, makeup does tend to be a little bit more expensive overall. All right, let's head to the checkout and then back out into the rain. We did good. Got in and out before the store got too crazy. And uh, yeah, time to head home. Oh, maybe first I'll show you the public toilet that's right outside the store. Not sure if it's open due to the pandemic. So Sunday is a day of rest in France. Uh, most stores are closed, especially in the afternoon. Uh, Monoprix in Nantes city center is open. Uh, they open at 9 a.m. Um, until I think around 1. 
And that's pretty common with city center grocery stores. They're open Sunday morning. But out in the countryside, that's not the case. And as you can see, it's like a ghost town here with bars pulled over the windows of all the regular shops. They're closed all day on Sundays, even in um, decent sized towns. And that's not because of the pandemic. It's just how things are here. Okay, here's a public toilet. I don't know if it'll be open because of the pandemic. Generally, they're free here in Nantes. And there's usually a urinal for men. And then uh, a toilet stall. And you know that it's ready because it has a green light and it says it's in service. Um, if someone was in there, the occupied light would be on yellow. It washes itself, uh, cleans itself after each use. So if it was doing that, it would be this blue one. And uh, let's check it out if it's a disaster or not. Okay, it doesn't look too bad. Okay, that wasn't too bad. There's even toilet paper. And then when you're finished, you hit the green button here, the sortie door opens. And one thing just to keep in mind with the public toilets is that if you hit that button to go out, but you don't actually go out and the door closes behind you, um, you will be in there when the wash cycle goes on. And uh, yeah, I'm saying that from experience when I first came to France. So right now you'll see that green button's gonna go off. It's gonna say it's occupied and then it's gonna go blue because it's gonna clean. And if you hit the, the exit button before you're ready to exit and stay in, you're gonna get caught in the wash cycle. It's not a big deal. It's not like a shower or anything, but water does come up and spray. See, the blue light just went on. That takes about 30 seconds and it uh, ruined my shoes. It was quite a shock being in there for the wash cycle. So learn from me, make sure you go in when it says green, ready for service, use the bathroom, and then just hit the button to head out. <laughs> Don't stay in for an extra shower. Okay, time to get home. Okay, so now for the information I promised you on my giveaway. As you saw at this timestamp, I bought a bunch of different patterned shopping bags. They're folded up into a nice little pouch, but the bag's a good size, and it's just a nylon bag, you know, not a super expensive gift, but a really cool souvenir. And I bought a bunch, I forget exactly how many I bought, but I'm gonna send three or four of you who are subscribed to my channel worldwide two separate patterns. So to enter the giveaway, uh, all you need to do is this, subscribe to my channel number one, like this video, number two. And number three, you need to leave a comment below, say whatever you'd like to say. But the special code phrase that clues me in that you're entering my giveaway is the following. Make sure somewhere in your comment you say this because when I pick the winner, I'm gonna sort by people who use this exact phrasing. It's, those are cool Francophile shopping bags. Those are cool Francophile shopping bags. That's your code. That's what I'll go by as your entry. So to enter, do that. Don't mention anything about the giveaway because the more people who know about it, uh, the less of a chance you have of actually winning if there are a bunch of entries. And most people probably didn't watch the end. So go ahead and do that. I'm picking the winner February 3rd around noon France time. You're gonna know that you won because I'm gonna reply to your comments. So make sure to check back, check your email, your spam folder. Um, on my last giveaway, uh, the actual winner never replied. She probably didn't know she won. So I had to pick someone else which is fine it all worked out but just be aware of that February 3rd if you are entering the giveaway to check back uh, and look at your original comment because I am picking several of you to win a bunch of these cool bags so that's all you need to know about the giveaway uh, let's move into my new segment called things I love okay so for today's things I love it's something I'm just experimenting with. Uh, maybe I'm going to share a book that I really enjoyed, a quote, a podcast, uh, something I bought, something I saw when out and about. It might have something to do with France. It might not. We're going to test it out. And this was a reader suggestion. Uh, the person would like to know what blogs I love. And for me, I've been blogging since 2012. That was the We in France baby. YouTube came after. And for me to you know, keep blogging. I had to share from the heart and be authentic about it. Um, there are a bunch of different ways to blog. Some people write to answer questions people are searching for in search engines. Some people write personal diaries. Some people blog anonymously. There's no one right way to blog, but for me, kind of how I do things and the blogs I enjoy most, people share a part of themselves. Now it doesn't mean they're an open book and they share private details of their lives, no. Um, but it means what they do share comes from an authentic place. They blog with heart and you get a sense of the person behind the blog and their content's cool and interesting. So with that, in no particular order, there are three blogs uh, that I've read for years. 
people who have been in this space for as long as I have, 2012 or longer. And in no particular order, we have one, Ashley of A Lady Goes West. It's an awesome, healthy living blog. I followed her for years and we've become friendly. And uh, yeah, she's awesome. So she writes about um, healthy living, being a group fitness instructor. Sometimes she shares recipes, what her life is like now in North Carolina. She used to live in California. Um, you know, just a look at everything going on in her life, really interesting content. So a lady goes west. Ashley, you do a great job. I love your site, you know that. Uh, number two is Gloria Atanmo, or Glow, uh, of Glow Graphics. Uh, she started as a blogger, a blog abroad. Um, she's an American who is of Nigerian descent, and she's an amazing OG travel blogger um, who's really adapted now to work mostly on Instagram, and she has amazing carousel posts and information, sure, about travel, but also about racism, about just life, about personal development, about blogging. She has amazing courses as well, and she's someone who you really get to know through her content. I look up to her. She's one of my favorite people to follow on Instagram uh, and her blog, so check out Glow Graphics. I'll put all the links. Um, I think I'll put them down below. So that's number two. And number three is Alex of Alex in Wonderland. She's one of the first travel blogs I started following back in the day, and um, she's amazing. She writes with so much heart, uh, doesn't just write about travel and her life uh, in Thailand or home in upstate New York. She writes about things that you can really connect with. Her writing is amazing. She's a nice person, and she does a really great job. She's a good photographer, too. Um, so yeah, check out Alex of Alex in Wonderland. So yeah, there are a bunch of blogs I read on a regular basis, but those three have always stood out to me and uh, they consistently show up and put out amazing content that always resonates with me. So if you don't know them, check them out. A Lady Goes West, Glow Graphics, and Alex in Wonderland. Okay, so that wraps up today's Things I Love segment. I'm open to suggestions down below about how you would like this, uh, this segment to kind of play out over time and if you enjoy it. And also, I'm gonna just plug my newsletter. Uh, the We in France newsletter is totally free. When you sign up, you get uh, a free PDF of do's and don'ts of what to do when you come to France. Just a little cultural guide in case this is all new to you. So sign up there, no spam. I really don't email more than once a month, twice max. Um, and the last thing I'll point out uh, is my merch. I have a shirt here that you can't really see, but check out the links down below. I have a bunch of cool things and new designs, including uh, mugs, even some baby clothes. I think I have a different, uh, like a beach towel now, a blanket that I set up, um, and sweatshirts, t-shirts for men and women and kids. So that's just a way to support my channel so I don't have to rely on sponsors uh, and a way for me to just keep on making this content that's free for you as the viewer. And once this pandemic is over, I hope to get out of my house a little bit more and um, do some really interesting content. All right, so thank you again for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video. And um, last thing, hit the bell. It's a notification button that lets you know when I update my uh, channel here. So that would be awesome. All right, thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciate you being here and I'll see you next time right back here on We in France. Salut.